Okay, uh, shrimp escape from side control. Cross body variation. Case of the Tommy variation. Going to the knees. Okay. Let's examine a little bit what happened here. This is a basic move, but very, very important. You're going to get stuck on the, underneath your friends sometimes when you train. You're going to need to know how to get away. So, in the first scenario, your opponent has gotten past your guard and he's managed to hug your neck. What we call cross body or cross face position here. He's also established an underhook on this far arm. Turn a little bit towards the camera. So my arm is kind of trapped here also. So, come back again. We have to kind of uh, separate uh, the scenario and think are we talking about a self-defense situation or are we talking about like a sportive situation for self-defense it's actually more favorable in my opinion to be hugging the person kind of close to you with this arm to avoid the strikes okay um, if we're in a sportive situation I don't have to worry about the strikes and I'll, I'll generally try to keep my arms tucked in more but just that principle of keeping close is very uh, valuable from the bottom at any rate you can't just hug them on top of you uh, you've got to make something happen with the position. So what I'm going to do is this arm that's hugging his neck, I'm going to start sliding my elbow up right here towards the top part of his head, and my intention is to make his, his head bend, so his ear will go to his shoulder here, okay? What happens is it weakens the alignment of his spine, makes it more difficult for him to put his weight down on top of my head and chest. So what I do, this elbow here, by the way, can you raise up real quick? This elbow here is on his hip, Raise your arm on his hip, okay? I don't want to do the move ever with my arm out like this. It's not really going to work too well for you. If ever I were to get stuck with my elbow out, I would need to get my elbow in first before I, I start my escape, okay? So what I'm going to do here, once the elbow's in, I'm going to start moving my arm. I'm going to point my palm up towards the ceiling and point my finger. It just helps me think about where I want his head to go. I'm going to point my finger towards his legs that way. Okay. As I do that, I'm going to bridge, and when I bridge, I'm trying to touch my eyeball to the ground, eyeball to the mat, so I'm going my head and shoulder, and watch what happens to his head here. See, right here, he's not keeping any of his body weight on me, all right? So I've got this uh, elbow helping me here, and I'm going to slide my right leg inside this gap that I just created, okay? So it comes in like this, bam. Now, he might have still been hugging my neck, okay, but right now I've got space that I created with my shin, and this hand here, the one that was on his elbow, is going to now be free. What I want to do here is I want to come in front of his arm and block. This is going to stop him from hugging my neck and also protect him from punching me in the face. Okay? So now I can either continue to hug his neck with my arm or I can bring my elbow in front and make an additional frame here. If I do this, I just have to be cautious that he could hit me with his right arm a little bit more. You see? So this is good for making distance, but you lose a little bit of the closeness. So you might want to play around with both and see which one you like the best. I kind of like to just hug the neck here because now if he tries to hit you with the right hand, it's not quite as devastating, okay? Now what I gotta do, raise up, is I gotta get back to the closed guard position. So this leg here is gonna slip through the space, much like we did with the elbow escape from the mount. My foot's gonna go on the ground and my knee is gonna come through. So it's gonna look like this. I start arching my body by putting my foot on the ground and arching. My knee comes through this space here. And now what I do is I start turning my hips and my foot comes out. And now we're back to the closed guard. Let's look at it from a different angle, so you can kind of see from this side. He's hugging my neck, I get my elbow in on the hip, I'm going to bring my feet in real close as I bridge, I turn my palm up and point my finger, take his uh, head in a weak angle and then I start to uh, escape from underneath him. My knee's going to slide under, my hand blocks his elbow. Now he felt off balance so he let go of my head. He might not do that in reality, but Let's say if you were hugging my neck with this arm, I would just slip my hand on the side and break his grip off. It's not very strong anymore, okay? Now, my knee continues to slide to the space. At this point, if he keeps his knee in real close, it's going to be hard for me to get my leg out. So I need to put my foot on the ground and turn my hips sideways and then extract my foot right here. Another trick that you might try, 
sometimes in this position is to combine this with your elevator hook flip. In other words, instead of just trying to pull my foot through, I'm going to threaten the sweep, which makes them sprawl out, which makes it very easy to get my foot through. Okay, let's slide back a little bit. Okay, so that's the first variation when he's cross body. Another one we're going to look at is when he's casing a Tommy. Now from here, what's really irritating about this position is not only his ability to hold me here, but his ability to change his hips. For example, he can move from this position to the cross body very easily. Okay? So the first thing I gotta think about in my position here is to try to freeze him or lock him where he is so then I can think about getting away. I don't want to start to try to get away one way and then he changes the position real quick and then he's always a step ahead of me, okay? So how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna try to make it so that he cannot turn his chest down. The way I'm gonna do that is a couple different ways. The first one, he's got a, a collar here. Okay, I'm gonna grab and I'm gonna punch into the side of his neck. Go ahead and try to turn your chest. He's stuck, okay? Now, you might be asking, okay, well, what if he's not wearing the jacket? What if he's not wearing the gi? After all, this is for self-defense, right? Well, you just modify the technique for the no gi. So what I do instead of grab the collar, if that's not available, is I just push his chin. Now turn, his neck is locked. He can't do it. He, you might think that he's gonna try to attack your arm, but he's really not capable. It, he can't turn his hips, okay? So either one of those grips is gonna be fine. All right, so once I've got this frame going here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump a little bit. You can keep a little pressure. I'm gonna bump and get all the way on my side. And then what I'm gonna do is I slide my knee inside this space right here, okay? Once the knee is inside, I extend my back leg and I start turning to the opposite direction. He's probably gonna try to keep his balance because he doesn't wanna get flipped over. But what happens is we land in that same situation, okay? There's one other variation that I'll show. You don't get as much control of the person's chest and his ability to tur not turn, but you get some control and it's just very simple to get the wrist because a lot of times from here the guy's trying to either strike you or grab you in some way with that hand. So with, when this happens, what I do is I get on my side a little bit and I take this hand that I was framing on his neck with and I get his wrist here. When I get his wrist, I just keep it extended away from my body, okay? Try to hug my neck, it's very hard. Once, he, once I get this established, I'm gonna scoot away a little bit with my hip and get up on my elbow. Go ahead and try to stay on top, clutch. He goes right over, okay? It looks kind of like ridiculous, but believe me, you can throw the guy over. Yeah. The only reason I would say, to, you know, I would favor this one as opposed to this one is because sometimes he can anticipate it and go to his knees a little bit. So if he makes it this far, you won't get the reversal we just looked at. Although I did get on my side, it's a little different position. All right? So just be aware of that. If you like this move, there's a possibility that he can freely turn his hip. Okay? This one, it's going to be much harder. Turn your hip. He's much more stuck here. Yep. Knee comes inside and you rotate. And you get the guard. Okay? Our right, last one we're going to look at. Cross body. But I've established the underhook here. Let's move this way. Okay. I've established the underhook. So before, get the underhook. Before he was winning the, the positional battle here. Okay. This time I've established the underhook. So what I do is I pull my palm in the middle of his back and pull him to me real tight. Okay. My feet are going to creep real close to my body and I get on my tippy toes here. Now what I want to do is bridge as high as I can. I'm going to look in the direction of his cross face, arm and legs. And I'm going to extend my arm simultaneously. It's going to change the uh, position of his body weight. So here's what it's going to look like slow. Keep your balance this way. Now this arm is going to attack the leg closest to my hip. So what I do here is I extend my leg and I come up and grab his leg. Right away he's going to try to grab me and stay you know, on top. But I've got his leg here. So what I do is I step between his legs with my knee, take my arm out and grab his hips. And my hand here now goes for a spar knee and I just drive him right over, collapsing him this way. All right. So underhook, feet coming close. Well, take your time here and just get your base. Use your elbows on the ground, go to your knees. When I go, I step between his legs, let's turn around, to face the wall from this angle. So once I'm here, 
I step my shin bone over his calf, knee on the mat. Take my arms, grab his hip, and my far hand goes through his knee or his ankle, whichever one you can grip. That's a preference thing. And drive forward here. And then you collapse him, and you make it to the top position. All right. So those are going to be the uh, shrimp escape. We looked at a couple different variations. The last one, uh, it's more of a bridge than, uh, than a shrimp. But you do use the uh, concept of getting on your side to eventually go and get the person's leg. And those three variations will hopefully give you some escape routes if you find yourself in the unfortunate circumstance of being caught underneath the person in bottom side control.